taking a dog to Morocco, a subject that is quite concerning for some and definitely involves a minefield of paperwork to get right. What documents and vaccinations do you need and exactly what should you expect? Wild rampages of rabies ridden street dogs and most importantly getting your dog back to Europe safe without any hiccups. So the vets looked at our paperwork and just said we can't travel. Over the next 10 minutes I'll answer all these questions and share with you what I learned from my 9 months experience in Morocco with my dog. January 2020, I was in Spain and met up with Eamon and Beck, who I'm sure you know from YouTube. After a couple of days of hanging out with them, the opportunity came to, to go and travel Morocco. I like spontaneous decisions, so I was like, hell yeah, let's go. All excited that night, I was talking to a guy at the campground, saying I'm going to Morocco with a dog, and he's like, have you got your vaccinations against rabies? I was like, yeah, yeah, of course. So like, you got your titer test? I was like, titer test? Uh, titer test. If you don't know what that is, as I didn't, I will come on to it further in the video. It's a big part of the video. The point about this tighter test is, at that current time, there was no way I had enough time to get this done. So I researched what the risks would be, and on the way into Morocco without your tighter test, the risk is basically uh, you can stay there but your dog has to be quarantined or you get sent back on the ferry to Spain. However, if you don't have this test on the way back into Europe, it's a different story and a lot more scary consequences which of course will come on to. For those of you who watch my channel, you'll know that I did make it to Morocco fine and I ended up spending lockdown there in the desert. It was an amazing time, I met the best people. If you haven't seen the Morocco playlist, then I'll put a thing up here where you can just go and check that out. I'd recommend it. Anyway, dogs. Now the first thing you're gonna notice is people's reactions to dogs. Now, Sen, my Malinois, obviously kind of looks a little scary, but at the time I also had another foster dog called Sucky, who's obviously just a cutie. I, when I first walked through the streets with the dogs on the leads, the, some people were literally like against the walls, you know, as you were passing through places. And many Moroccans don't see dogs as pets at all. Uh, they're either vermin, would vermin be right? A pest? Or, or a tool. You'll even see people pick up a stone from the ground as soon as they see your dog. I had quite a few experiences with this. I've been walking down the beach with Sen right next to me, uh, and a stone, I'm like, what's going on here? And I look, and there's some kids just throwing stones at her because they see their parents do it, you know, and their parents do it because there's wild dogs that, if they bite them, they, they could have rabies and they die a terrible death. So you've got, you've got to understand it's not that they're, they're mean towards dogs, it's just, they have a completely different perception of them and I'm sure if we grew up there we'd have the same perception too. In fact that brings me on to a good tip actually, if you are in a situation where there's an aggressive wild dog you can just even just pretend to pick something off the ground and just, just do this and, and they're used to that, they know that that means you know this guy's going to throw a rock at me and do him one. Some people have water in like a, in a but I don't think that's very effective myself, I know if I did that to Sen and she was in on a mad one it'd just make her more mental so. But speaking of wild dogs, you know Morocco is there's loads of wild dogs, but 99% of the ones I met were absolutely just just beautiful dogs. I know I showed that clip at the beginning, uh, but that was just for dramatic effect. I'll be honest. That's Coco. He is a wild dog. Coco, you don't have to admit you. You keep everything in check. Dad. But he's actually Sen's friend, and they just kind of did that to each other as they walk past each other each day for some reason. I don't know, I think it's like some sort of flirting. So yeah, don't worry about wild dogs. Uh, there can be packs of them on beaches quite often. A uh, good thing there is you can take your dog on the beach every night. Depending like how your dog reacts with other dogs coming up and being quite on top, then I, 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 there could be a fight that break out. You know, there are dogs at the end of the day, but with Sen, she was always fine. She would be a bit like, you know, but she, they just always got on, and Sucky just rolled onto her back, so... Depending on your dog, it should be fine with the wild dogs. But if they're not, remember there's always the rock. Food is a big point because the actual dog food to buy there is like three times the price as it is, as it is in Europe. So 10 dirhams is approximately one euro, one pound-ish. A lot of the time I'd actually just cook for Sen, or or mix a bit of kibble up with some, some other stuff like sardines and things like that, because they're pretty cheap there. So depending on how long you're going for, you might want to take a big like 20 kilo bag with you or so, or yeah, just, just, just be prepared, it's expensive. Kids will menace your dog. And this is actually the worst thing about Morocco, at least for me and, and Sen, because since coming back, 
she's had some issues with kids where she's like, she's she's afraid of them basically, and that causes her to snap at them, you know. <laughs> Sen! Sen! I've got her to stop doing it now, finally. I do plan on going back to Morocco with her, and that is my main concern, that now she's gonna get this build up, this fear of kids again. Because literally, there's so many times I came back to the van and they'd be banging on the window, you know? This is what I come back to all the time after leaving Sen in the car. The kids. Hello. 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 You can be walking down the street and they're like, like hiss at the dog or like pretend to throw stuff out and that, and obviously it makes the dog the, the dog nervous. So that is a big problem. The kids are a problem with the dogs. I think what I'm going to do next time is have some blinds on the front windows. So if I do leave Sen in the van somewhere, I can she can't see outside, and, or, or the kids can't see inside and think, oh, that's menaces dog. Again, it's just a different upbringing. They're just the dogs are they're not they're not pets. To, they're not pets. This next point is a bit more unique to like specifically my experience because uh, Sen's a Malinois and there is a Malinois craze in Morocco. Most places I am with Sen, most countries they, they like think she's some sort of German Shepherd cross. In Morocco they're like, oh Malinois, Malinois. Malinois. The young lads, they, they love it, you know. Which has its pros and its cons because they are a target for theft. And yeah, dogs do get stolen in Morocco, but I mean, just as they do in, in many other countries. In fact, I think the UK is really bad for it right now. The pro to this is there's lots of training, specifically IPO training, like attack dog training, which uh, I don't know, some people have different feelings about this, but I took Sen to a, a, an awesome guy named Simo to do some training for the day with her. He, again, I'll leave a link to that video here if you want to see that. And I can, I can tell you firsthand that Sen loved everything that she did and she learned a lot from Simo which actually brings us on to today's sponsor Skillshare now I'm not big into painting however Amy is although to be honest I'm not that great at it so she's been using a Skillshare premium membership to brush up on her painting skills Skillshare is an online learning platform with thousands of classes the classes are made by creators for creators my membership has enabled me to explore and enhance my skills in many different areas from photography to guitar over the last week or two Amy has been taking this class modern acrylic painting by Kat Coculet this lesson is going to be all about brush control techniques which has taken her on a journey from complete beginner to a bit better than a complete beginner hey <laughs> or maybe you should try the live classes live classes yeah skillshare have live classes where you can connect with popular teachers while learning alongside other members get a little real-time inspiration yeah? And of course, Skillshare has no ads because its main focus is on learning. So you can get stuck in and stay focused following your creativity wherever it may take you. The first 1,000 people to click the link in the description will get one month premium membership for free. So check it out. Thank you, Skillshare. Okay, the big one, documents, vaccinations, all the I's to dot and T's to cross. Um, let, let me just let me just be clear on this to, to start with. There's so much different information from different places on what exactly you need. So to go to Morocco, your dog needs to be microchipped. They don't actually need a passport, but whenever you get your microchip done, whenever I've done it, I've always got a passport at the same time. I'm sure they just do them together. The dog must be vaccinated for rabies. So different sources, different things. Some say you just need a rabies vaccination and some say you need the vaccination and the titer test. The titer test, let me tell you what the titer test is. It's a blood test which tests for the antibodies for rabies in your dog. And then there's different opinions. I'm gonna say opinions, yeah, it should be a solid thing, but there's, there's so many different opinions on the amount of months that you need to wait and everything else. The titer test takes 10 to 15 days, usually. It's, you'll hear more about that later and then some sources say you then need to wait between 21 days and six months to be able to travel with that that test result some say that you can travel straight away but no longer than 12 months from the from the result and then some say and this is the most common one actually is say you have to wait for three months after the test uh, and no longer than 12 months. I wish I could be more concise with this, but it's just how the information is. On top of that, you need the good health certificate, which is the vet just has a look, look over your dog. Uh, three sources. One says it has to be within 10 days before travel. One says within three days, and one says within 24 hours. So, take a guess. 
Uh, one Spanish vet actually told me you also need an animal export certificate, which you get after the health test. Uh, as for wormer and uh, tick flea treatment, it's not a requirement, but I strongly advise you do do it because it's really difficult to get out there. You'll see I've got a couple of videos that there's some crazy little like there's like a, a flea cross tick that like stick into a the dog's paws in here and you have to like pull them out of tweezers and stuff. So yeah, I, I, I'd advise you to take some of that with you or at least treat them before you go. I use uh, Frontline like spot on with Senu, a little like drops you put on the neck. Uh, the tablet stuff like Nexgard, I tend to stay away from because of the horror stories. They just scared a shit out of me. So then coming back into Europe, I obviously didn't have the tighter test. So the plan was, because it's a 10, 15 day job, I was gonna get that done in Morocco while I was there. However, COVID hit. And where I was at the time, I was 2,000-ish kilometers away from the nearest vet that would actually do this tighter test. So for me, by the time the lockdown had actually lifted to the point I could get to this vet, I had the blood test done and they sent them off to Europe. But again, because of COVID, this, this 10 to 15 days actually turned into, I think it was like, six to eight weeks or so in the end out to wait for it to come uh, but you know i was parked by the beach so it's all all right now i know i risk going to morocco without the antibodies test but the, the, the there was no risk to the dog on the way back in from what i've heard there are risks to the dog if you are caught without your tighter test then the dog can can be put down or destroyed as they say so make sure you do have that um, again there's this whole like do you have to wait three months after the test results or not I've asked vets in Morocco, I've asked vets in Spain, I've Googled it and there's just different answers everywhere. The main answer I was getting from in, in Morocco was they'd say, if it's a dog that's never been in Europe, you have to wait the three months. If it's come from Europe to Morocco and then back, you don't have to wait the three months. It was 20 euros for a jab and it was 150 euros to have the blood tests, including them being sent to France and everything. <laughs> The ferries. If you're coming from Spain, it's a pretty short ferry, a couple of hours or so. The dog stays in the, in the van or your car. I can't remember the cost, to be honest. Oh, actually, maybe I didn't tell them. Because, you know. On the way back, if you've seen my videos, you know the hassle I had coming back. I, I, rather than getting my return a couple of hour ferry, I actually had to get a three day ferry to Italy. It was actually only an extra 50 euros or so to have a dog, and we had our own cabin. It was like me and Sen in our own cabin. Dad's bird. Shen's bed. Amazing. Are you excited to be back in the van? Back in the van. Obviously, Morocco is a hot country. There's the issue of keeping your dog cool, just the usual stuff, you know. Park in the shade, keeping the place ventilated, keeping the fresh cold water for her. You know, it's uh, just the usual stuff you'd do on, on a hot day in Spain or, or even in the UK. A good tip for that is whenever you are gonna leave the dog for, for a while in the car, if you have to, then stay there for maybe 15, 20 minutes first to check that it is staying cool before you go. And the last point I wanna make is just enjoy it because the, Morocco is actually a brilliant place for dogs. There's so much open space for them to run and rivers for them to jump in. Uh, wild dogs for them to make friends with, <laughs> you know. It's, it was an awesome time and I can't wait to get back there with Sen. And now Amy. I've been caught red-handed. Would you lock me up in your hands and never abandon me again? Been calling out your name in the storm Can you hear me in the rain as it's pouring on the streets? Feel like I've been sitting here for weeks Waiting on a miracle or somebody to preach to my heart It hasn't reached to my soul Whoa, as I was sitting there damaged Then you came with your arms wrapped around me like a bandage How can I thank you for what you've done? A payment is equivalent to a half grain of sand And all I can do is thank you Cause I'm out of fact it's Paid all my debts by the grace of the sun Grace of the sun If I was a slave If I was a slave If I was a slave If I was chained If I was chained If I was chained to repay you besides my life laid down as a tribute i hope it continues from rome to japan modern acrylic painting for beginners by cat coquillette <coughs>
<laughs> Modern acrylic painting by Cat Croc. Cockrelette. Modern, ac Modern acrylic painting by Cat Cockrelette. Cat Cockrelette. 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 <laughs> 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 Which is it gonna be? <laughs> We haven't got time oh, for this oh, shit. Sorry. Cat sorry. Coquillette. Okay. Um, modern acrylic painting by Cat Cock. Fuck. Modern acrylic painting by Cat Coquillette. 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 Modern acrylic. Quoi? Quoi? Modern acrylic painting by Cat Coquillette. Eh? Well done. I mean, it'll do. It's not right, but it'll do. Um, Be vaccinated for rabies and have a titter test? <laughs> fucking hell. What was that? <laughs> you can do a test on me. Can you close that? <laughs>